Hello and welcome to another Stranger Objects tutorial. My name is David Drayton and I welcome you to the show. Today, as I promised on Twitter, I will show you how you can work with splines in Blender. Um, if you're coming from Cinema 4D like I am, um, then splines in Blender work slightly differently than they do in C4D. Without further ado, let's jump right in there. Welcome back. So. Before we start to create something like this, and as you can see, this is the real-time viewport of Eevee, which is absolutely beautiful. We will have a closer look at how splines are working in Blender compared to Cinema 4D. Let's jump right quick into Cinema 4D and have a closer look at how splines are working there. Let me just switch applications. Here we go. Um, I think most of you are familiar with that inter interface. Let me just start off by simply drawing out the spline from top view. So now we drew a, a simple spline and we can edit it by going into the different tools like, like this like grab tool or like uh, the scale tool, which has no, no influence at all, or into the rotation tool, which actually doesn't have any influence either. If it doesn't have any, any tangents, of course. Um, if we have tangents, then we can, of course, scale, rotate them, and manipulate them as we would do in, in, in any other uh, application that we know, like uh, Adobe Illustrator, for example. In Blender, it's basically the same. Um, you um, let me just switch back so you can you can see what we're doing here. Let me just create a new scene file. No, nope, we don't save this one. We just delete delete everything, and we go to top view. You can use that the gizmo up here. You can just like click on the on the Z axis, and it will jump into top view, and you can see it's top auto graphic. And let me just um, create by sh pressing Shift A. Let me just create a uh, a spline. So spline, 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 curve, it's called curve. Let me add a bezier and uh, to make uh, to make this uh, what we call in Cinema 4D editable, <laughs> there's an edit mode in Blender. So just press the tab key and go into edit mode. And as you can see, um, you can select the points. You can drag them around by using the tools um, like the grab tool, for example, you can drag this point around exactly as you would do in Cinema 4D. So there's absolutely no, no difference at all. Um, to me, I am a huge fan of learning shortcuts. Um, I also learned all the shortcuts in Cinema 4D and uh, therefore I would like to introduce them to you. But before we do that, um, you can always turn on that multi whatever gizmo it is it has like scale move and rotate in, in one gizmo um, I actually I'm not a huge fan of it but simply because I've learned all the shortcuts but basically this is like a unification of all of these above like moves rotate and scale um, at all times you can of course uh, switch these different modes uh, depending on what you want to do and have the gizmo visible if you don't need the gizmo, just simply go back to the select box and you're good to go. I think it's easier if you learn the shortcuts and therefore I will explain how you can manipulate um, the spline inside of Blender using the shortcuts. Of course, like uh, I, I explained in, in Cinema 4D, you can use like the rotate tool to rotate the curve along its point. You can scale it and you can see you're scaling the tangents, same as you would do in Cinema 4D. And last but not least, using G to grab the uh, the file. As you can see, I just middle mouse buttoned and that, uh, that gives me that little gizmo in the viewport where I can, um, as soon as I get close to one of these axes, it will constrain um, the action towards that um, towards that uh, uh, axis. So if I if I just go towards the x axis here and it's highlighted, I let go, then it will be constrained along the x. If I use middle mouse button again, coming close to the z axis, it will move it up and down. So that's that's basically something you can do. Or uh, if you don't like to use that gizmo, you can press G, 
Then you press Z for the Z axis, X while still while in dragging and Y to move it along. And the cool thing is if you want to do it uh, in a precise manner, what you could do is like press G, X, negative two and press enter. And then it will move that point along the X axis, two units in the negative space. So that's pretty cool. G, X, two to move it back where it belongs. All right, so this is basically the easy mode on working with splines. So how do you draw or add splines? I, I, I know that there's, I, I'm not sure if there's a specialized tool for this. Oh, there's a specialized tool, but I'm not sure if it will work as soon as we come in here. But if you have a spline already drawn out like this, what you can do is you can uh, press the E key to extrude that point and Blender will connect it with each other. So extrude may seem odd if you're coming from the cinema world or if you're coming from Illustrator, because there you just grab a tool and keep on drawing what you're drawing. Um, but on the other hand, what I really like about this is that the E for extrude uh, uh, symbolizes, or at least not symbolizes, but um, has the same meaning in all the other modes too. For example, if you want to E for extrude a polygon or E for extrude an edge, it's always the same thing. So you just have to remember one shortcut in all different modes, whether it's curves, splines, or um, polygon um, surfaces. All right, so these are like the very basic things you can do to uh, manipulate your spline in Blender. Um, there are also some viewport settings which I would like to address um, because sometimes it can be a little um, hard to see uh, how the tangents are aligned to each other whether you select all of them, but then if you use uh, one of those tools, uh, like the grab tool, you will manipulate all of them. But if you want to see all of them at the same time, what you can do, you come over here to the overlays tab and, oh, sorry, you come to the overlays tab and then you have curve edit mode handles to switch it from none. Well, basically it hides everything or you go to all and then you will have all of these visible in the viewport. Yes, I think it's hard to see in my default theme here, but what you can do, you can change the theme or change the colors all within the preferences. So next I wanna talk about what you can do with those curves. Um, basically, let me just switch back to Cinema 4D. Uh, here, oh, I keep pressing the middle mouse button, I'm still so used to it. So um, basically what we can do in Cinema 4D, we can use several uh, methods to manipulate our curve. For example, let me just come in here and use a oh my gosh, it's been so long, extrude. And then you drop it in to the extrude modifier here and you can define the, the extrusion of your spline. Of course, you need to choose the right <laughs> axis to extrude along and then you can have an object uh, similar to this one. What else we can do in Cinema 4D is we can use a circle spline and we can um, attach to certain sweep the circle spline along the spline itself by simply dragging both objects into each other. And as you can see, this is way too big. Let me just get it down. And what you'll have is something like this. Um, in Blender, it's almost the same way and the same thing to do it. Let me just go back to Blender and show you how it works here. From within the properties panel down here, we, got, we have to switch down to the uh, object data properties and the, uh, for this object data, let me just zoom in a little just to make it bigger for you. Um, and the object data properties has some really cool features just such as geometry. And we can also, of course, extrude our spline. Let me just get out of the <laughs> edit mode and we can extrude this. And you can see it will extrude our object. Um, we can, of course, offset it. We can do a sweep in Blender, of course using this um, bevel down here and we can just increase the depth and now we have our same object as in Cinema 4D. So um, you can also use fill caps at the very end. One cool thing that you can do, of course, is you can, um, let me just turn on the wireframe so you can see it better. If we are back in edit mode, what you could do, and this is where the context menu comes in in Blender, you can select the point and then go into the right click menu and you get some additional features um, 
that are specific to splines. For example, you can use um, Alt S to manipulate the radius of this exact point, which I find is really cool if you want to do some kind of stuff like this. Or let me just Alt S it. Oh, no, that's the wrong button for me. Here, Alt S, scale, Alt S, scale. And you can do some kind of really nice shenanigans with your spline all within that uh, within that spline itself. The data is stored on the spline as far as I remember. And there's also another cool feature. Let me just use that one right there. Right click, we can tilt those points as well. So if you start tilting, you can see that now we're getting some kind of twist or tilt into our curve. Let me just use that one in Alt T, no, Command T, yeah, Command T, and twist our geometry. And this is where I would like to stop and end the part one of our tutorial series on creating a rope on a spline. If you like what you've seen so far, please consider subscribing and also leave a like. And I would like to hear your comments in the comment section. Um, so see you in the next one and thanks for watching.